Do you know how to get free fertilizer from the air? Legumes can help you do it thanks to some special nitrogen fixing bacteria that they have a symbiotic relationship to. We're going to jump into that, but here's the key thing you need to know. Those bacteria aren't always in our soils, so we need to inoculate our seeds before we plant them. In this video, we're going to talk about what inoculant is and how to use it. I'm Amy Landers with GardensThatMatter.com, where we believe your garden is the key to a better food, a better life, and a better planet. Behind me, you can see our cover crop, which we planted a few weeks ago in one of our past videos. And it's doing great, and it has some legumes in it, and we were careful to get those legumes inoculated before we planted them. Now, what is inoculation? Let's start with a definition. For our uses, inoculation is the introduction of beneficial microorganisms, like bacteria and fungi, to the seeds or to plant roots. And those beneficial microorganisms are going to help the plant with different functions as it grows. With this mix behind me, we used two kinds of inoculants. We used a rhizobium bacteria, which is the nitrogen fixing bacteria that goes with the clover and vetch and peas that are in this mix. We also used a mycorrhizal fungi inoculant. Now mycorrhizal fungi is awesome, but that is a topic for another video. Let's talk more about those nitrogen fixing bacteria that give us the free fertilizer, pulling nitrogen out of the air and putting it into the soil for us. These nitrogen fixing bacteria work with a special group of plants called legumes. This is the bean family. So all of the beans, the peas, vetch, clover, all of those are legumes, and there's lots of other legumes as well, but in our gardens, those are the, mo the main ones that we think about. Now, these bacteria actually infect the root of the plant. Usually, we think of infections as a bad thing, but in this case, it is not. This is going to be mutually beneficial for the bean or the pea and for the bacteria. Once it infects that plant, it starts to form nodules, and the bacteria live inside of these nodules on the roots. So when you look at the roots of a healthy inoculated legume plant, you're going to see those nodules. These bacteria can pull nitrogen from the air, gas form, and pull it into their bodies where biochemical reactions happen, and they are able to put it out in a form that the plants can use, an ammonia form. And when they do that, the plants are able to take that nitrogen in. Plants need nitrogen. It's a building block of amino acids and proteins, animals, of course. We also need those things. And so plants are able to get that from the soil, and in the case of legumes, they have this nitrogen source right in their roots. In exchange, the plants will feed that bacteria. They'll send sugary exudates made by photosynthesis, carbon dioxide, sunlight, water. They are able to form these carbon-based sugars and send them down to their roots to feed those bacteria. So it's a great beneficial or a beneficial um relationship, a symbiotic relationship. Now these bacteria are naturally occurring in many of our soils. You probably have some in your soil, but if you've got poor soil, compacted soil, it's just not healthy, or if you've been using lots of chemicals or the people who grew in the space where you're growing before used lots of chemical fertilizers or pesticides, you're not going to have as much of this bacteria. So it's a great idea to inoculate your seed before you plant it. Now we're going to do this because that inoculation ensures that those bacteria are in the, are going to be able to grow in the roots of these plants. So we're going to have better production. We're going to have higher nitrogen. If we want to be growing for beans and peas, we want that production, right? We want to be able to eat that food. And if we're growing in the case of this planting, like cover crops, we want that nitrogen fixing happening because part of our goal with a cover crop is to build the soil, feed those soil microbes so that the next things that come, the next plants that we put in this area, will be able to benefit from the nitrogen those legumes and their bacterial partners were able to put into the soil. Here's how you do it. First, you are going to look up the right inoculant for your plant. Peas and beans use a certain type, vetches use another type, clovers use another type. Most of them belong to the rhizobium family, but you do want to find out, make sure you're paying attention to getting the right inoculant for the seeds you're planting. Second, remember that this inoculant is alive. It's living bacteria. They, they're dried out, but if you get them super hot, if you put them in acidic 
uh, situation, they won't survive. So if you're not using them right away, be sure to store them out of the light and in a cool place. A fridge is great for this. Now, when you are ready to use them, you're gonna follow the instructions on the inoculant. They'll come with instructions on the bag. Some of them will do like a dry coating on seeds. Some of them will do a slurry with water or a sticky sugary solution. But the inoculant that you're using will have the instructions for you to follow. Once you're clear on the instructions, it's time to gather your supplies, including a container for mixing. You may also wanna grab gloves and a dust mask at this point because the inoculant is a dust with fine particles, and that's gonna be one of the recommendations on most inoculant packs, just for safety. Now on your container, it's important to choose something large enough that you can mix without spilling seed or inoculant. If you're doing a large area or several smaller areas like we were with our cover crop, you can grab a wheelbarrow. That works great for this. We were able to mix 50 pounds at once and then put it into smaller buckets to carry out to where we were seeding. If you're seeding a smaller area, a bucket is probably all that you need. And if you're just doing a few seeds, for example, if you're planting your peas in fall or spring, you can use a small bowl or even a recycled yogurt container. Finally, you want to be sure to plant your seeds promptly. You don't want to wait around a long time. You want to let that, that if you've used a wet method, you're going to let it dry a little bit so that you can spread the seed evenly with that, whatever methods you're using to plant. But you do want to get that into the soil. If it's not in the soil, you have that same problem of storing these bacteria in a way that preserves them. So you have to figure out how to keep it cold and out of the sun. Better to just get it in the soil where that root can sprout, the first little root, the radical out of the seed, and that bacteria can in infect it and get that relationship going right from the beginning. Now, one last note about plants, because sometimes they can be lazy. Here's what I mean, and it's related to what I mentioned earlier about how soils that have been managed heavily with chemicals are not gonna have as much rhizobium bacteria natively found in them. It's because the plants in, in soils where there's plenty of nitrogen available because of fertilizers, right? Even, like whether it's conventional fertilizers, ammonium-based fertilizers, or blood meal, cottonseed meal, nitrogen-rich organic fertilizers, in either situation, if a bean, a pea, another legume has easy access to that nitrogen, they will actually stop feeding their partners, their, their beneficial bacteria down there, the rhizobium bacteria. And so you will not have as much nodulation, you won't have as much nitrogen fixing in that situation. It's like that nitrogen in the soil is kind of candy for the plants, and if they don't have to feed the bacteria, they're not going to. But we know that situations where the plants have that rich soil life around their roots and in their roots in the case of this rhizobium bacteria we know those plants are healthier in the long term so we want our plants to not be lazy not go for the easy candy we want to encourage these beneficial relationships by inoculating our seeds so that we can pull free fertilizer out of the air for more garden goodness head on over to gardensthatmatter.com i'd love to see you over there if you've got garden friends who would enjoy learning about inoculants in their garden, please share this video with them. I would appreciate that very much. And I would love to hear from you down in the comments below. Tell me, have you inoculated your legumes? How did that work? If you have more questions, leave those in the comments as well. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. And until I see you again, happy gardening. Uh, now I'm just gonna do stupid things. <laughs> I gotta stop because you're gonna use that. Don't see the one where I'm like, I'm gonna do stupid things. Please don't use that part. No, don't. How about if I do this? Inoculants, inoculants. Use some inoculants. It's worth it. <laughs>